My work can be surmised by one word, between. I see my work at the juncture between traditional and contemporary painting, past and future. My aim is to promote a physical reaction in the viewer, like a disturbance in the gut or a tingle that unsettles. My artistic instinct lies in the incongruous. I aim to interpret the intersection of where a sense of belonging begins and ends, and where energy shifts between positive and negative. Here I painted a length of two by two wood, red, and photographed the stick along the coast of Spurn Point in East Yorkshire, the UK. It was a naive but meaningful start of my visual journey. My interest in spirituality, religion and otherness also finds a home in my work. Exploring how faith, prayer and religious beliefs are shown in painting, particularly Byzantine Orthodox Christian painting, has helped me develop my own use of geometric lines. Finding other artists' visual solutions has aided me in my own interpretation of visualising the invisible aspects of faith. Not only does Byzantine work inspire me, but also that of the 19th century Romantics. It is an aesthetic tradition that many feel comfortable with. My use of their painterly mechanisms draws the viewer into the familiar. I then ask questions of the viewer by using geometric lines and shapes. I also title my work in such a way that it acts as a signpost. Looking at more contemporary artists, Terrell's skyscrapes allowed me to look at landscape differently and the notion of space. What exactly are we looking at? Air, sky, clouds, heaven, just squares even. Is there movement, silence, abstraction, the figurative? Is this work an empty vessel or is there a fullness here? To bring these questions and answers into a 2D medium is a journey that I feel I am on. The use of the internet provides me with the opportunity to find new imagery I might not have normally come across. This photo is a phenomenon called a light pillar. I find imagery like this shows a universal way of communicating otherness. This translation of the light pillar is likely to be a millennia old. I often have my iPhone pointed to the sky for different light and weather effects. My favourite places to find these phenomena are wild and bleak landscapes, particularly the Outer Hebrides. When I travel there, I am not distracted by modern technologies and I can embrace the weather, emptiness and simplicity of life. It is the vulnerability of island life that I find so compelling, where life is literally lived on the edge. Wilderness obviously inspired Sarah's bold, timeless art piece, which is located in the Qatari desert. Here he uses space as a material. He used the four metal sculptural forms to make space distinct, turning nothing into something. Where there was what we might understand as nothing, we now have a destination, an internal and an external. This emptiness is made visual in Maimuna Garesi's photographic series, The Golden Door. The void of the cloak's black arch resonates so strongly with me. It reminds me of Anish Kapoor's sculptures where he uses the controversial Vanta black to great effect. The use of gold she uses here is for me extremely compelling also. As mentioned, my inspiration can come from literally anywhere. For instance, the Dutch Moses Bridge is a wooden trench bridge that almost completely disappears in the water when it is viewed at a certain angle. Even when the bridge visually deceives, it functions perfectly. It is rather like an invisibility pool. They are another object that I find compelling. Rachel White Reed's work has also led me to look more closely at the idea of the void, be it physically or emotionally speaking. I keep going back to houses and as yet, I have not yet resolved my vision. Rather like Vanta Black, I use Stuart Semple's Blackest Black 2.0 pigment here. It absorbs all light, leaving the space either full or empty, depending on the viewer. Going back to edges rather than emptiness, I find Gia Former's Mariah Concert Hall in Saudi Arabia is stunning. The sharp edges and the geometric cube shapes captivate me. Former writes, the silent and respectful mirror 
cube is a way to create a dialogue between nature, history and the future. I feel this is my life's work, but produced as architecture. You can see some obvious similarities with the concert hall here. This is Europe's largest cold storage building that can be seen on the left hand side of the M62 towards Manchester in the UK. It changes depending on the position of the sun and light quality. In my mind, it is almost an art piece in its own right. I always look forward to passing it as it really does provide me with inspiration. The cold storage building led me to a new series of work based on solitude and the sublime. This piece is a large oil on canvas. I have not yet resolved my vision of bringing the concept of a literal empty space into the landscape. I've looked at the work of Agnes Martin to help me find a visual mechanism for emptiness. Her work is, of course, much more abstracted and minimal than my own, but there is a language there that I resonate with. As I mentioned, I continually go back to the 19th century romantic painters, mostly Russian, Scandinavian and British. I look at their handling of paint, their palettes and their subject matter. We live in such turbulent times, but there is a reassurance and nostalgia that supports when I hark back to this aesthetic. It allows me a pictorial stability to push forward and think of the new. I always have a sense of wanting to find the essence of home and security, be it through buildings or more recently boats. I use this geometric shape not only as a compositional device, but also as a symbol that is reminiscent of a more nostalgic and sentimental time. My choice of framing is purposeful in forming a visual bridge between what we know to be safe to a new, more uncertain world. Much of my desire to make the invisible visible comes from my experience as a private pilot. There is an invisible landscape of transparent corridors across the Earth's surface known as Earth space. This is a CAD image of actual 3D airspace above the UK as pilots see it. It is now how I see the sky. I think this knowledge has strengthened my commitment to the line and geometric shape. My work sits uncomfortably in between that which is commercial and that which is perhaps something more challenging. It is slow art and takes time to digest, something that contemporary life offers little of. This small nocturne is intended to offer a space to be, to reflect and to consider. As you can see, public sculpture and architecture are often sources of inspiration for me, as are newer technologies. This is Ruben Wu's artwork, which is created by photographing in remote and extreme locations with his camera, using a modified drone to illuminate landscapes at night. Recently, I have begun to use advanced pigments. In this painting, I've used Stuart Semple's Lit Pigment, which glows in low light. I'm at an exciting time in my career. I feel ready to embrace new technologies that will sit within the notion of painting. I hope working with these new materials will help me continue my journey to visualise the edge of where the invisible meets the visible. <laughs>